Hi, welcome to this lecture on Envart adaptation of animals. Now we will consider more detail on the mechanisms, how we can keep the body temperature constant. So how we can modulate the insulation in the thermal neutral zone, how we can upregulate the uh, heat production in cold, how we can uh, regulate the uh, heat loose in the hot environment. So first of the thing that okay we can do, we can modulate the insulation. And these are the things that something that we all know. So we have pilomotor responses or telomotor responses. And so we are erecting the hair or the fetters to enlarge the motionless air around the anima. And of course, this means that, okay, there, there is less wind facing the skin. And that's why we are losing less heat. And even in humans, we do it in cold temperatures, but we have so thin hair, so it doesn't, it's, it's not very effective. Then the second way is to, we can regulate the blood flow in the skin with vasomotor responses. So the arterioles are constructed in cool temperatures, and this will make the, our skin color a little bit pale. And it regulates it with sympathetic nervous system. But it's, uh, uh, this mechanism is also working in hot. So if we are in a hot, in a hot sauna, the skin color will be turning reddish because there's more blood flow in the skin surface. Then the third way is on the behavior. So we have pastoral responses. Mammal, mammals are curling up or the birds are sticking the head under the uh, body fetters. So we can also reduce the uh, loss of the heat by reducing the uh, size of the or, or, the or the surface area of the of the body, and that's something that we humans do also. So quite easily in the winter time, we stick the uh, hands in the pockets. So we are reducing the cold sensing in the in the uh, in the in our fingers by and and using the same system. Then, beside that, we can increase the heat production with shivering and non-shivering thermogenesis. So the shivering means that, okay, it's made by skeletal muscle cells, and usually the skeletal muscle motor units are working together. So the whole muscle is contracting at the same time and moving the uh, Moving, moving the bones and moving the animal. But if these motor units are working separately and unsynchronized, they are not contracting at the same time, so there's no movement, and that's why the more heat is produced. Even in when we were moving, we learned that, okay, majority of the uh, ATP that is we use for the movement is actually do, do, doing something else that's how it's producing heat but now even the rest is producing heat then the uh, non-shivering thermogenesis is based on the brown adipose tissue and it's widely expressed in the mammals but only few birds have any bat and in this the sympathetic nervous system is increasing the bat catabolism of fat stores and okay, the fat stores are used for the energy metabolism, but the last part is using this uncoupling protein that we already learned from the uh, dur during the uh, energy metabolism. So beside the ATP synthesis that is pa allowing protons to pa go through the inner membrane of the mit mitochondria and the movement of these protons is used for ATP production but beside that we have this uncoupling protein so allowing protons just to flow back to the mitochondria and this will produce a lot of heat and still although it's widely known that okay several mammals have have brown adipose tissue it's still quite controversial that okay what is the role of for example brown adipose tissue in 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 adult humans but still we have quite interesting themes in 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 
end of terms. So although the end of term it means that okay we regulate the body temperature and we think that that okay the body temperature is constant but actually it's not in the tip of the nose or tip of the fingers we have colder temperatures than in the bo body core core of the body so we have appendixes they are cooled down easily with the convection and that's why the birds and mammals are limiting the he heat loss across these by lowering their temperature so if you are measuring the temperature from the tip of the nose in the reindeer it's 20 if you are measuring the temperature in the tip of the nose in the sledge dog it's only five degrees of celsius and okay it could be working just because okay there's lo so much bone etc so these low metabolic tissues so that's why the temperature is, uh, in these uh, appendix is based on the heat transfer transfer from the other parts of the body anyway so it might be that okay they can't just maintain the body temperature in these distal parts of the animal but actually it's highly regulated so in these arctic arctic animals they decrease the temperature for example in the legs near zero but not below zero so it, they they anyway they avoid the frostbite and how you can regulate it you can regulate it by changing the circulation so if you are measuring the temperature of the opossum air the opossum air temperature is the same as in the environment as well as in this jackrabbit the rabbit air is very cold when it's resting it can be maybe 10 degrees or celsius but when it starts running it will increase drastically circulation in the air so the air temp air temperature is over 30 degrees of celsius and this is actually a very good way to reduce the heat uh, or rising the temperature in the in the rabbit when it's running and how we can modulate the peripheral temperature because if we have a leg the problem is that okay the heat is lost by convection because there's a large surface area that's what we learned already in the digits a uh, long time ago and this will cool down the venous blood and also if it works without the counter core heat exchange there's also quite high temperature in the tip of the of the of the of the leg so there is a large temperature difference between the body temperature and the ambient so that will increase the convection so that's why we have this counter cord heat exchange where the artery and veins are close together so the artery is heating up the venous blood and at the same time the blood in the artery is cooled down so there's colder blood flowing in the tip of the of the leg but it will be heat up on its way back to the heart and it's actually pretty simple it can be found in mammals bird legs but also in fin, uh, tail fins of whales and the air pin of rabbit so the heat is short circuiting between the blood vessels but the blood is making the whole circuit and interesting is that okay we can regulate it we usually have two different veins so for example the human arm we have one vein on the surface to increase the heat loss but then we have another one there deeper that is heated by the artery so we can regulate so in cold temperatures we use one vein in hot temperatures we use the other one 
But then, how to tolerate hot? We, of course, know that, okay, when you are running fast or being in sauna, you are sweating. But that's n not the best way to cool down your body. It's, it's very good, but it requires large water storages. So that's why it's usually used as the last line of defense. We can have that, okay, some animals are cooling down in the, during the uh, night time. Like dromedary camels, the temperature is about 34 degrees or Celsius at night, and then it rises to 40 during the daytime. And there is a lot of energy needed for the heat, the camel. So actually, it's been calculated that they are saving 3 liters of water from evaporation with the 6 de degrees of Celsius fluctuation. And then, usually in, in endotherms, we have quite high body temperature. So the pro that promotes the non evaporate heat loss. But still, some animals are able to increase the already high body temperature, like birds they can evaluate the body temperature up to 45 degrees of Celsius in hot environments. And then the heat is losing with this non-evaporating heat loss. But also in some savanna mammals are using it. So they, the body temperature can be 45, 47 degrees of Celsius in the daytime. Okay. Ain't the tumbrol that, okay, the neural function is the weakest link in the endothermic thermal tolerance. So that's why we can't tolerate fever or hypothermia. Yes. But still, because we have high metabolic rate in the, heart, in the brains, the, body temp temp uh, the temperature in the brains is about half a degree of Celsius higher than in the circulation. But also there are differences, because we are using the brains, it will increase the temperature. So there are, if we have physical exercises, very drastic physical exercises, the, uh, the brain temperature can be 2 degrees of Celsius more than normal. And even we have some uh, psychological things like like okay when we are speaking it's half a degree of celsius more than the normal rate or when we are the, the cat is grooming uh, grooming it will increase the temperature in the in the in the uh, in the brains but also we have we can cool down a little bit the 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 brain temperatures and in some animals, we are, they are very good in this cooling down. So they can, the brain temperature can be cooled down 2 degrees of Celsius less. So it can be below the uh, temperature of the rest of the body. And how they do it? They, they, they do it because they can then increase the body temperature. So they have, can have this hyper, uh, hyperthermia. And they are using the same kind of counter current heat exchange that we will learn in the, in, the, in the legs, etc. So they are cooling down the artery blood before it enters in the, in the brains. But still, there are a lot of mysteries uh, related on this. But then, we have this evaporation, like for example of sweating. Okay, it's quite a rare phenom. We, we do it, horse do it, camels, some kangaroos. Not all the mammals and none of the birds. And the problem in the sweating is that, okay, we are losing a lot of water. In, in humans, the maximum can be two liters per hour. And also, also, although the sweat contains much less salt than in the plasma, but 
the prolonged sweating is depleting sodium concentration, chloride concentration in the blood. Then we have painting that is more typical in the birds and mammals. So increasing the breathing, it's good point. Okay, no salt is lost. The, the we can you can even uh, increase the high breath rate by achieving a resonance frequency in the uh, in the respiration structures. So the muscles are not working all the time. <coughs> so that's why the dogs can when they are painting the the respiration rate is about two two hundred times per minute. But the problem, if we are increasing the uh, respiration, is that we are losing carbon dioxide. Because the carbon dioxide is transported with, uh, with this kind of equilibrium. And if there is less car uh, carbon dioxide, it will actually increase the alkalinity. And that will cause the fainting. And animals can limit the fainting in the painting uh, so that's why the dogs have this shallow panting breath where the air is moving only in the upper air, airways so the deep breath from the lungs are made in the same frequency as usually so that's why in the shallow panting breath no carbon dioxide is lost but also, some animals are even tolerating this alkalinity. Thank you.